Hey everyone. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. Yes. We are super excited that you're joining us this evening. We are. We have a really cool um, tutorial for you that tonight. Yeah. Um, we are looking at Aunt Philly's toothbrush rugs. We are. We and are. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know about you, because I've done a little perusing on the internet before yeah. we um, got this kind of, I would say, this mission, this yeah. task. <laughs> and I don't see a whole lot of videos about this out there. I don't. I don't. So I really hope that we can bring you a great instructional video yeah. and then you get excited about wanting to try this, because I know it is super fun. Like, I actually, I want to show you one really quick okay. before we get started. Okay. That I actually made. Yeah, let's give them a look and see what we're, what we're talking about. Yeah, a long time ago. So I made this one a long time ago, kind of neutral colors to kind of sit by my door. Um, and I just use regular cotton fabric. So you guys all know that if I can do it, you definitely can do it, right? Hard facts. <laughs> <laughs> so super fun just out of some scrap fabrics. And we're gonna show you how you can take your scrap fabrics and make a fun toothbrush rug. Um, a casserole dish. I she mean, just threw that on the ground. Well, Y'all saw that, right? She just <laughs> tossed that it back on the ground to the front door. It goes. <laughs> I had to get out of the way. <laughs> anyway, and then all these different designs that we're going to show you. These patterns are just awesome. You, It's really cool what you can do with scrap fabric and then you can embellish your home. So that's kind of what we're going to show you tonight. Yeah, before definitely. we do that, what do As we do? always, make sure you subscribe to our channel. So it's going to be right down there at the bottom right hand corner. After you click on that subscribe button, make sure you click on the little bell that shows up so you can get notified whenever we post new videos or whenever we go live here at After Hours. Woo. I should just get a shirt that says that. I know, right? Just, just like, point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mom, yeah. these have been around the house, around Grandma's house, since yeah. I've been a little kid. Yes, they have. So, I know that we have a special guest here tonight. We do. Um, to kind of give us an idea of what these are and how they've come about and how she you know got the pattern to start all of this yeah. um and, and that i've seen around in my life yep. um so i would assume that special guest might be my grandmother it is your grandmother so why we are bringing her in how many of you guys have ever made an aunt philly's rug mug purse any of the stuff that she carries when her friends let us know if you've made one and what you think about it um and um, and if you have any extra tips that we don't show you tonight. Definitely let us know in the comments below. Yeah, exactly. All right. Grandma, so you come, come on, on in. in? <laughs> All righty. Hey, everybody. So we have mom, grandma, Alice. So we'll call her Alice for the video. Um, I will not. I, I will not ever. No, this is grandma. I shall not ever say that. No. Um, I didn't even know she had a real name. Oh, you're it's so It's grandma. <laughs> um, so what she's going to show us today um, is how you get started. Okay. So, you know, the different the needle that you're going to need, which is an Aunt Philly needle, which we carry, and then ha the pattern that you're going to need based on which way you want to go. And then she's going to show you how to rip the fabric and how to kind of just get going with it. Well, we get to rip fabric? We get to rip oh, fabric. Oh, heck yeah. Because yes. when you did your quilt, cutting, yeah. oof. I know. Uh, let's have, <laughs> I'd rather just rip. So, okay, this is easy. Yeah, okay, so we get to rip that scrap fabric and use it and put it to good use, no okay. matter the colors you have, things like that. Okay. So, um... Really quick, I know that when we when you first started, I don't know if you can see over here, but this was your one of your first ones. Maybe not your first ones, but one of your first ones mm -hmm. about 15 years ago? 20 years. 20 years ago. 20 years ago, and it has been washed dozens and dozens of times, uh -huh. and it's 100% cotton. Yeah, so she just used regular cotton fabric on this one about 20 years ago. Again, washed a lot of times. I also use regular cotton on mine. Now, the difference between cotton and then you started going to batik, batik fabric. Yes. Tell them the difference and why you decided to go with batik. I like the batik because it's dyed. It's not printed on. Okay. Therefore, oh. I don't end up with the little shadows of white. Though it looks white. Yeah. Okay, because printed on, I have a good color to it. That makes total oh, sense because yeah. when I'm looking at my brown one, I can see the little back end of the fabric. So a lot of the cotton fabrics have, they're not printed through and through. Correct. Some of them are, but not a lot of them. Right. And so to be, a, and you never know which way you're going to be turning that fabric when oh, you're yeah, when feeding it, through it through. Yeah. So if you do use a batik, then it won't matter because they're bleached all the way, or bleached. They're dyed all the way through and through. <laughs> I don't think they're bleached, <laughs> no. no. They're bleached, dyed all the way through. <laughs> so it's going to give you a little bit more vibrant color along the way and any of the things that you do. Oh, so cool. that's really good. So you really like using batiks. We have I this do. one. 15 this years. This is like a massive one. Yes. 15, 15 years. What it's is it 36 about? by 60. 36 by 60. So you sat there and needled for a while. Yes. And then we have this one over here. Yeah, and this one's only about five years old because uh -huh. I had changed my colors to be a little bit Lighter. different green. Yeah. yeah, 
fun. All righty. So you kind of see the theory of what she really likes is these oval rugs and what she's done. But we also want to tell you all about the other different patterns that are out there. So what we're going to do now is go over and show you the patterns that we have. So I am over here. And uh, the first one that we were looking at, I guess we might as well just start. You said that we started off with the oval. Where's the oval? Uh, right there. That. Perfect. Okay. Um, so this is the oval rug. And this is going to give you your starting patterns, how you're going to work through it. Um, tonight, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to show them a little bit about working through around the rug um, and going through it. But this one's going to definitely take you through from start to finish how you're doing that on these patterns. Yes. So we've got the oval rug, we've got a rectangle and a square rug. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty. Yeah, they are. We've got the, uh, the casserole cover. So funny, I Everyone saw the casserole. That. I know, I'm like, really? You can make a casserole Everyone cover? Everyone needs one of those. That's why you need the pattern. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's what's up. And then a purse. You can make a purse. Oh, party on. Gonna be on New York Fashion Week. I know, right? I've got mug rugs. Those are so cute. Yeah, that's like, that should be like oh, the really quick, easy, simple. Can you imagine making those as gifts? Easy gifts. Like easy, Christmas really presents, quick gifts, yeah. Like that. Um, oval basket, so a nice little basket would be cute to have fruit in or something like that in the kitchen. Maybe some display um, on the mantle or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, or carry it to the new neighbor in the neighborhood. Yeah, so there you go. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, we've got the round rug. I love this one. This one is a good uh, focal point when you're doing it, like maybe in like a living room or something. You mm -hmm. could get this one to be really, really big. Yep. Um, and then last but not least, the uh, tissue box cover. That's super cute. Yeah, these are all so This is fun. fun. Okay, so okay. let's, why don't we go overhead and take a look at um, just kind of one that she's looking at and then we'll go into like ripping fabric and stuff like that. Okay, so let me show, let's open one up really quick. Actually, this is a little smaller so we don't take up two. Kind of what it's going to look like at the, um, when it's finished. So we're overhead and this will kind of give you an idea of how, let me move that out of the way how pretty it is and how like the flat it lays and what are some some good tips so when I wash it, wash it and dry it, mm -hmm. I don't completely dry it. I dry it, mm -hmm. and then I take it out and lay it on the floor and put okay. it exactly where I want. So when... All so fabric stretches. So. Got it, got it. So if we were to... Okay, so you, like you said, so you, you lay it on there and just kind of let it stretch out. So then you're pulling it out like this. Right. So the kind of the way that you want it to look, and then you let it do that. So you're going to do that with any of the rugs or any, any of, of the them. stuff that you do. Any so of them. Kind of like you're blocking a quilt. Yes. Oh, Unless okay. You have to kind of set it out and get it blocked out. So that was just to kind of show you, you know, what one completely looks like, um, and then you wanted to show one that you're working I on. I just kind of see the one that works. So this have a different. There's a bunch of different color schemes you could take into this. Yeah. So, um, so just one that she's working on here. This is a bunch of, and we're going to get into this one later. But just looking at the different color schemes of the oval rug here, um, I just thought it was kind of cool to see that process. Kind of where it's at. All of this is what I use from scraps. Oh, okay. Okay. So That's some scraps. of my projects, I, I buy a pacific color uh -huh. like on the rectangle one here i'm going with a pacific theme color because it's a gift for somebody and this is their color so okay. where on this one is all my scraps so give me an idea um because i'm sure if you're a viewer at home you're thinking just like me right now where are we at right now time frame wise like how much time have you put into this one right here I right, think it really depends on, like, I do a lot of it at night when I'm watching TV, so okay. I'll do a couple hours in the evening, Okay. and then I just work on it when I want. Now, the smaller ones take less. Of course. Less time. Right. Okay. This bit, great big one took me about six months, but I only worked on it an hour here and an hour there. Just a little bit here and there and there. Wrong. Okay. Gotcha. So, really, I find it extremely relaxing when I'm watching TV, because I, once I get going on it, it's really easy. Right. So no, you just I can, keep going. I completely understand. People ask me all the time when I do a custom quilt. They're like, how long did that take you? I said, I have no idea. I did, <laughs> I did an hour here, an hour there. So yeah, no, I totally get what you're talking about. Um, just kind of that rela relaxation thing. Okay. So let's go into fabric. Where are okay. we at here? So let's, I'm going to move this one up a little bit okay. and let's shift this up. So let's show them how you mark it and then like how you rip it. Okay. The best part, the ripping part. This is one yard. Okay. Um, you can do it any amount. I did this one because each one of these colors, I have one, two, one, this will be a yard. And okay. So kind of what theme I wanted. Right. Um, I do every two inches. So you can set your ruler or if you've got a board and you come in and you clip it, both of them together, you want the edges. You do not want your center fold 
Oh, you want the I edges. See. It's really important. So the salvage of the fabric? Salvage of the fabric. Okay, gotcha. And so I'm going to clip that. Let me move you up a little bit. Every two inches. Over. Oh, oh, over. <laughs> okay, sorry. Like that? Yep. Cool. Okay, sorry. So as you were. So I clip it every two inches. Okay. All the way down. And we, we clip some of this fat I showed, you know, every two inches. Right. Then we take it the ruler off or however you want okay this is the fun part i love doing this when the kids were younger or actually it was grandkids mm -hmm. and or mm -hmm. i did this when i do things with kids i'm like okay who am i most frustrated with <laughs> <laughs> that's who i'm taking this out on so we're just ripping it all the way through yep just rip it and are we just starting on one edge here we're not we don't have to pull them both at the same time right no i okay. i go from one side to the other okay but hey it this doesn't matter. It's still going to be Oops, two almost inches. almost took Grandma out. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all saw it. Wham. All right. All right. <laughs> She's like, all right, you can finish the video now. <laughs> oh, this is fun, though. You get excited. Wham. Talk to somebody. Okay. Yeah. That's what she's talking about, frustration. <laughs> cool. Okay. So we've got those. So let's say we'd rip all that all the way through. Mm -hmm. And you have all these extra pieces. And then where do you go from there? Well, uh, actually, then I take and fold them up. And okay. I stick them in a in my little storage container here okay sometimes i put them in order of pattern ah, sometimes since this is scraps uh -huh. put all my purples in one all my greens and others and then when i go to change i just go to that pile okay gotcha. makes it easier which probably makes it much easier because then you can just grab each one you don't have to go guess what was next you just kind of go in your line right 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 okay so okay. we'll move these out of the way okay Okay, let's show you from the beginning how we do this. Okay. First thing we're going to do, make sure our salvages line up. Flip it over about three quarters of an inch. Okay. Inch at the most. And I'm going to clip this down. Oh, okay. About a half inch. So what that does is it allows it so that we can continue on. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to go to the very center. All right. I'm going to put this safety pin on. And just kind of just looping it right, right around that. So it's still, you didn't go through the fabric. It's just. No. Okay. No. I see. I see. see it, I see. Okay. But just the middle of the fabric. Right. Okay. I'm just with you. Just the middle of the fabric. I'm with you. Okay. Then we're going to take it and I'm going to add, the, put the needles on. Always important to put your needle on. <laughs> Might need that. Going to need that in order to do it. So we're just folding that up and it just goes right through the needle, nothing fancy there. Correct. Okay. Now at home, I have a, a habit of putting this on my blue jeans or sticking it in a pillow or something. Okay. So since I don't have that here, I'm going to try to do it from this point. Okay. So we have one piece here that is our back. This okay. is our piece that's going to go in between all of our stitches. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to take... And the first one is a knot, just like this. Okay. Okay. Now you can see, I'm going to bring this over just like this. Okay. Okay. And I bring this through. That is my second stitch. Okay. You'll find the very beginning is the most difficult. Once okay. you get going on so it. So don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. <laughs> so put it over. So I, just, I want to pull this here. So you have a little bit of a tail from that other half. Yes. And then you're yeah. using this one. So you're working on that tail. Correct. I see. Okay. okay. So I lip o lip it over. Okay. And pull it through. Okay. So I'm going to do this just a few times just so I can show you how we make our curves. So you can see it goes pretty fast once you get going. Yeah. It's just the very beginning that is more difficult to do. Okay. So you can see I've only got about four inches, five inches left on here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add one on. Okay. And we have one there that's already clipped. Okay. There's that. Put this on top. You can see my hole. Uh-huh. I'm going to bring this through. So as you can see, the bottom is there on top. Okay. And I'm going to bring this right through my holes. Oh, I see. You're just kind of making a, a knot without making a knot. Right. Per se. And okay. you pull it through. And once you have it all the way through, it looks nice and neat. Oh, 
Nifty. Okay. Like that. And that's just how you keep it going. And you keep and going and going. Oh, You'll find out that the piece you use in the center, we'll you won't use as, well. as much. Okay. Yeah. Everything will run out. But you, you won't change it as often as you do the one, you're, you're the one that you're... Piece. Yeah, because you're making loops and knots. Right. And, it's good to have a little pair of scissors by you, your needle, always. and then because you're always going to make that cut on that fabric always. to attach. Okay. So again, I put it on top. Underneath and pull. Underneath and pull. Ah, I see. So you see. And you're just working your way. I'm just that. working my it. way. Okay. Can when, I give it a shot? Yeah. Okay. I want to see. So. Tighten your last one. So I've got the my working piece and kind of my laying piece is what I'm going to call this. Yes, just that's for my good. just for my little my brain to get it. So I'm laying this my working piece on top of that laying piece. Correct. And then I'm going to go underneath my laying. Mhm. Mm so right between laying and working, and pull through. Yeah, I'll be careful not to get myself up caught up in a knot <laughs> like that. And then you go over that piece and then that begins to be your next Correct. section okay mm -hmm. so work like that i can see how starting this off might get a little not confusing but tedious when you're trying to make sure you're just work you're doing the same you're the right thing not really the right. same thing but right. the right thing so and it's kind of like an over and under is what i'm over seeing. and under yeah. over and under to get started and then each pattern will be just a little bit different where you start your turn what you do but this is definitely a way to get started uh, working on one of the patterns. Cool. Right. Okay, Perfect. so how do we make, how do we start making a turn around this? So, we're going to bring our piece that lays on the bottom. Okay. The under piece. So our laying piece. We're going to bring it back. I see. Okay. Like this. Okay. So this is still going to be over the top. But now, you're going to go right in the first hole. The very first I gotcha. See, so you're still uh, going over and under. Okay, all right. Okay, but now you're turning. I got it, okay. So if you think when you make a curve, you're gonna have to have more than one stitch in that particular hole right. in order to make that curve look nice. Okay. So it's I'm still on my curve. I'm still bringing this over. So you got your working piece. So your, right. your laying piece is always laying on the long side this, always. but then your working moves with eyes. Right. And, okay. And I'm going to go through that same hole again because I'm going around a curve. Every time I go around a curve, each pattern will tell you how much you got to have in it. Okay. So I've tightened it up and look at that. Oh. Yeah, starting to make the curve. That makes sense. Starting to make the curve. So I'm going to do one more in this hole, then I'm going to move. Okay, and then start. And then there. I'll go down. Okay. Until okay. you get to the end of this. Until you get to the and then you go around. around. And you'll find that when you go to the next curve, you'll need four or five, depending right. on what the pattern. That's why the patterns are so important. You go down, make a curve, we'll make and you back. just go back and forth. Okay. The biggest is always remember that this is over. Uh-huh. And then my stitch. Uh-huh. And under. Okay. Okay. Always okay. Over, over and under. And under. Perfect. Okay, that was a really good tips on how to get them started, and then once they have so the pattern, they'll we're... know what they need to do. Right, so now Perfect. we've made our curve, and we're ready to go down the next side. Okay, awesome. so let's take a look at the one that you've really got going on here. Okay. So let's move, let's take your, how do I do this? Some safety <laughs> benefits. There we go. Yeah. So let's move that out of the way, and let's take a look. How did you, you like it like this, right? Yeah, this is great. Okay. So this one, you can see, we've got, what, 12 inches now? Yeah. Now this will show you how fast and easy it goes. Again, see we're over and under. And you just work your way through that. And you just keep going. And when you get to the curve, as you do these patterns, you will find what, how many to put in the holes to make your curves. I love that. Because each of your curves, you can see here where there's been a double stitch in some of the areas and a single stitch in others. Got it. Because you're going around the curve, I put doubles there. Got it. I need to expand it. Okay. And then I continue. And you're just doing that all with this one needle and some two inch strips. Yes. I think this is crazy. It's so cool. So I want to try this one then. Okay. So this gives me an idea. So we kind of make that little loop mm -hmm. going in that stitch. Correct. Then That's un correct. underneath and then over. See? Just like that. And then pull. So then kind of making that like that. Yep. So I'm going in that stitch, 
underneath the laying piece and then through the working piece Look at there. and pull. Look at that. Huh. You're going to you be making it. rugs for your house in no time. Not bad at all. Love it, love it. We just keep going around and around. And that's what is very important on the directions on these patterns right here is the simple fact of whatever pattern you're going to decide from the beginning uh -huh. determines you're all going to start it with the knot. Okay. You're going to keep going. Okay. But determining whether you're going to do an oval one like this, uh -huh. whether you're going to do a rectangle one, okay, or whether you're going to do the little circles. I use these for hot pads. Okay. Any of those ways, each pattern give, tells you what you got to do, how rounds. many you're going to start, how much you need. Okay. Okay. The brown one, when I, I made that, it sh well, I have to say, Grandma got it started for me, That's so right. I don't remember that <laughs> part at the beginning at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she must have done all that for me. I remember doing this. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it's not too bad once you get, I mean, what did, how did I do? Not bad? You did great. Yeah, not yeah. too bad once you get going and at the, no, the it's tip just, underneath it. But yeah, I think that first row, it's getting just it through that was getting through that would be the yeah. And once bit. you get the first row and you make your corner and you're coming down your second row. Right. After that. Piece yeah. of cake. It's a piece of cake. Hmm. Hmm. Awesome. Interesting. So, you want to hand me those? Yeah. Uh, sure. There's that one, that one, and that one. So, I figured tonight that you guys had to go home with something. Oh! Oh, so each one of you have one. Oh, Yay. thank you. My color is purple. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, this. That's cool. Awesome. I almost think I need a matching one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and well, hey. she's been canceled <laughs> from the show. <laughs> there are colors in here that might match your house well, better. Thank you so much. I appreciate the thought. <laughs> kind <laughs> grandma you know. spoiling. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Well, um, well, do you have any um, additional tips that you would like to give the viewers and leave with them? Things that you might have run into when you've made these in the past. Not like problems, but like just tips that you went, you went, you did this or you did that. So the measuring tip is a perfect one, like how, how wide you want to make it. So that's how you make your first row. That's a really uh -huh. good one. Um, using a... Now this does have the directions. The directions right? I just happened to use the diaper pins because that's what I had plenty of. All right, so that's perfect to have in there and to attach. Um, now attaching to my leg uh -huh. or wherever, wherever I'm working. Sometimes I have a pillow and I just stick the end of it in the pillow. Yeah. Please just be very careful if you attach this to your leg. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that you don't poke yourself. <laughs> yeah, don't poke yourself. But. Yeah, and then having them organized and then uh, like your fabric organized so you know how to pick and go. Um, and realizing that you can start this project. Like it took me two years to do mine, but it was only because I would do some and then they would get put away for months. <laughs> and then I'd do some more again and then I'd put it away for months. And that's okay. Yeah, right? and, and when you attach it, mm -hmm. as long as you got your first two rows, you can untach it from you. Yeah. Okay, so that's not an issue. The other is when I wash them, you wash them just on regular temperature. Okay. Um, okay. I've never washed one in cold yet, unless that's all the water I had. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, usually so use the warm water. And so regular detergent, just throw it in the washer, yep. clean it, and take it out where it's just a little bit still dry so you can stretch it and let it dry naturally. Correct. Those are some really cool. good tips. I really like good it. tips. So now you guys can see how simple it is to make some really quick, easy gifts for people, make things for yourself make rugs for your house to kind of embellish it. I mean, there's good, you could, like, these could be, like, some awesome, like, wedding gifts, too. Oh, yeah. Or, like, a new oh, home, yeah. like, if new it's, homeowners. like, new homeowners yeah. want, you want to make something for them. Yeah, if you're and a realtor or something, you can make stuff for exactly. your new homeowners. Exactly. And it's then if cool. you just want to add some stuff to your house, carry around, a, you know, be on Fashion Week with your purse, <laughs> you know, the tissue box covers, the mug rugs, the casserole cover, I'm, that's kind of what I want to try. I think that is super cool. Yeah. So, they're all really cool. So, definitely check out our patterns on our website. The description will be below. Um, make sure when you get the patterns that you do get a needle. This yes. is very important. You, you do need this needle. It's already <laughs> yeah. ready for you to go. Um, and it's super cool. So I am so excited that we were able to do this video. Hopefully we gave you enough tips to get you started, help you out. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments and then we'll get those answered for you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Grandma, so much for joining us. Well, we thank you for it. inviting me. Hi. I love well, doing this. It's so much fun. It is a blast. All Alrighty. Right. Uh, well, thank you all so much for joining us here on After Hours. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.